Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to another Babblers video. My name is Zeru and this is Umineko, the long-awaited Umineko. This is going to be an incredibly, incredibly long series that I've just started now and I know it's going to take me, it could take me a year to get through this. I mean, there's so much content in it. It is a psychological horror visual novel and it is a pure visual novel actually. Uh, so there's not like the choice, you know, the games that I prefer to play, which are the choice based games. This is purely a story, but it's very engaging, and it really sucks you in. And, um, I've played this, uh, I haven't played it all. I've played a little bit, I think like the first chapter or something like that, but um, it was a long time ago. I don't remember much of it, and I do remember being creeped out of my mind, so hopefully we can be creeped out together. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and pop this in full screen. Hopefully it doesn't stretch the pixels, the pixels too much. Um, so, I'm not going to really say anything about this, you know, I'll put a little bit in the description below, but I'm not going to say a whole lot about what the story is about, uh, you guys will find out pretty quickly, so. The story is fictional, any resemblance to real people, events, etc. is purely coincidental. Again. So, you still haven't overcome your love of alcohol? The old physician let out a sigh as he removed the stethoscope. The stethoscope. Two elderly men could be seen in the dimly lit study, which was filled with dust and a sick sweet stench. In the corner of this room, which was much larger than what most people would call a study, there was an, an, an expensive looking bed, a man undergoing a medical examination, and the physician conducting it. There was also what appeared to be a servant watching over the whole scene. The bottle is my friend. It is no less of a friend than you, and it was stood by my side, and it has stood by my side even longer than you have. <laughs> wow. As the man who had bared his chest for the stethoscope rearranged his clothes, he spoke unapologetically. Kinzo-san, your body only appears to be well thanks to the effects of the medicine. However, if you continue to drink such strong spirits, the treatment will become meaningless. Trust my judgment. Uh, I must also uh, add that this game has been re-digitized, remastered over the years, because it I think it started back in like, uh, 04 or something like that, like a long time ago. And so the sprites were outdated, and you know, the, and the sprites have become more modernized and updated for modern kind of anime. This game, is the original. Um, so, for the Umineko purists, you'll actually like that the that the um, spirits, or not the spirits, the sprites are all, you know, old looking. <laughs> Refrain from drinking. I thank you, though only for the sentiment, my friend. Genji. Another glass. Water, water it down slightly. That way, Nanjo can save face. Are you quite sure? After eyeing both the master who demanded the alcohol and the family doctor who, and the family doctor who forbade it, Genji, the old butler, silently give, gave a slight nod and carried out his master's orders faithfully. The family doctor, Nanjo, let out a deep sigh once again as he watched the butler busy himself alongside the liquor cabinet. There was a smell filling up the room. This sweet, poisonous, poisonous aroma felt as though it melted the heart, if not the soul itself. It was the smell of that venomous green drink that the man couldn't bring himself to part from. The ab abanithinth, or whatever it's called. I can't pronounce it. Nanjo, you are my close friend, and we've known each other for quite a long time. I am deeply grateful for all that you have done to keep me alive this long. I have done nothing. After all, you never listened to my advice as your physician. Ha 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 ha. And you never listen when I warn you about a mistaken chess move you're about to make. It seems we are even. Master. Thank you. I wouldn't let I wouldn't die if I ran out of your medicine, but I would if I ran out of this. Disregarding Nanjo, who had his face set in a resigned expression, Kinzo took the glass that Genji was holding out to him. 
There are probably very few people who would associate the venomous color which filled the glass with an alcoholic beverage. Nacho, be honest with me. Which, how much time do I have left? Well now, how short must I make it to get you to stop drinking? Nanjo once again let out a sigh of resignation. Then he finally spoke to Kinzo as the latter swirled his glass. You don't have much time. What precisely do you mean by that? Sorry, I'm looking around because I can't see the time that I have on this. Hold on. Let me check something. Okay. We'll just keep it like this. Let us illustrate with a chess game here. You have very nearly achieved checkmate, but you have not yet cornered my king. Nanjo's gaze was directed at a side table with a massive chess, chess set placed on top of it. Judging by the positioning of the pieces, the game seemed to be entertaining its final stage. The black book and bishop were cutting deeply with, into the enemy lines. The white king had already been castled and cornered, so that even an amateur could see that the match would reach its conclusion before long. Every time Nanjo came to give a medical examination, both of them would make a few moves. So Nanjo's the doctor, and uh, I forget what the Lord's name is, but he's like... Basically what's going on here, I'll just kind of explain real fast, you'll find out soon enough, but... Um, the There's a, a guy who's a wealthy dude, okay, and he's like a older man. And he's obviously a, a diehard alcoholic... And he's like best friends with his doctor, okay. Um, and but this plays into the story because, well, you'll see. Nanjo was hinting that Kinzo would most likely fall into his eternal sleep before the game could be concluded. Okay, so Kinzo is the old man who's an alcoholic. There were less; these were less the words of a physician than they were the words of an old friend. Were you a normal patient? I would recommend that you write a will at this point. And what is a will, Nanjo? Handwritten instructions to the vultures on how to devour and scatter my corpse? No, not at all. As the word suggests, it is a way for you to record your will for later generations. It is far more than just a means to divide up your inheritance. <laughs> and apart from the division of the inheritance, what might I write of? Oh, there's your regrets, and matters you've left unfinished. Things you want to be passed down, and things you want to tell. Anything you want. <laughs> things I want to be passed down, and things I want to tell? Ridiculous. I, <laughs> Ushira, <laughs> Ushira Moya, uh, fuck, Ishir, Ishiro Mia Kinzo have not one thing I want to tell or leave behind. I was born with nothing. I will die with nothing. There is nothing I wish to leave to my foolish children. Even if the end were to come today, even if it were to come right now, I shall accept this fate of death without a trace of fear. I created everything. My fortune. My prestige. Everything. Those who... Those were built up... Those were built up by me and they will be lost along with me. There's nothing I wish to leave behind. Very, very bitter old man. Nothing! After I'm gone, I care not if it all goes to waste. I desire no tomb, no coffin. Those were the terms of the contract I made with the witch. When I die, everything will be lost. The witch. That has been part of the promise since the beginning, and that's why nothing will be left behind. There is nothing I can leave behind. After reaching a furious crescendo, Kinzo suddenly slumped over. His expression was limp and feeble, as though an evil spirit had possessed him and then left. However, I do have one regret. I have nothing to leave behind, but there is one thing I cannot leave undone. You would do well to write it down. Of course, it would be best if you could finish it before your time comes.
However, even if the worst happens, those who come after you will carry it to completion. You must leave behind your regrets so that they can be resolved, even if you aren't able to do so yourself. I, yeah, I'm sorry. I, I So, this is a pretty old game, so it's sometimes difficult to tell when you've switched characters. And I think the doctor's talking here now. That is the purpose of a will. When Nanjo tried to gently pat Kinzo's shoulder, the dying man flew into a sudden rage and batted away Nanjo's hand. It's useless! 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 It must be done while I still live. At the moment of my death, my soul will be devoured by the demons of the contract and wiped out of existence. For me, there will be no death, or another world after death. That's why everything must be done before I go. That's why I will. That's why will has no meaning for me. And even if I had a chance to write such a thing, if I did have such a chance, I'd want to see it. I want to see it one more time. I want to see Beatrice's smiling face one last time. Oh, Beatrice, why have you resisted me for so long? I'll return everything you have given me. I am prepared to lose everything. So please, show me your smile just one more time. Beatrice, I beg of you. You must be able to hear my plea. That's the kind of woman you are. I beg of you, show yourself to me. You're here, aren't you? Oh, Beatrice, you're standing there, invisible, listening to every word I say. And even now you're mocking me from somewhere in this room, aren't you? Please, appear before me one more time and smile. Feel free to scold me, even snatch away my life by your own hands if you wish. I don't want to die alone like this. He sounds like a crazy man. I cannot let myself die until I've seen your smile just one more time. Ah, Beatrice. Beatrice! I offer up this life of mine. I offer it up to you. I'm begging you. Beatrice! Alright then. My throat hurts from doing his voice. I hope he dies soon so that my voice can actually have a rest. That is Beatrice. Oh, did I mention that this is, like, heavily Japanese? Yes. Welcome to Rakajima. Alright. The first day, October 4th, 1986. Whoa! Things sure move with the times. I can't believe we'll be able to make the trip in just 20 minutes. I couldn't help but scratch my head and marvel at how things have come in recent years. We used to go by boat. Back then, we were all forced to endure nearly half a day of swaying back and forth over the sea before we reached Najima. Things have gotten so much more convenient these days. Still, I've never been on a plane this small. I've flown in a huge jumbo jet before, but this will be my first experience in such a tiny one. It's going to shake, isn't it? They say that smaller boats shake more, so I guess the same rule probably applies to airplanes. Ah, just spare me. Haha, <laughs> don't worry, Bat Batalikon. Shake much less than that boat did. I'll sh it'll shake much, much less than that boat did. Ah! ah! Is that you, George Anaki? Anaki? I'm sorry if I butcher like, the Japanese pronunciations. I know there's like diehard nuts out there who are like, Oh, it's 
Aniki or whatever, you know. Um, I really apologize if I butcher it. Uh, just a disclaimer, so don't judge me. <laughs> don't scare me like that. You just shaved three years off my life. Anyway, what's shaking? What's shaking got to do with anything? <laughs> you don't think I'm actually scared of the plane shaking or maybe falling out of the sky or something, right? Oh, of course not. My mistake. I see you've changed a lot since we last saw you. After all, it's been six years since then. You're not a kid anymore. Haha. <laughs> Sheesh. And here you are, old enough to smoke and drink. I've got no interest in smoking, but I've always wanted to try some booze. Heh. <laughs> well, if you've got your own dad's genes, I'll bet you can hold your own when it comes to drinking, right? Well, I usually drink for business rather than pleasure. It's pretty hard to do business in Japan without it. <laughs> That's exactly right. That's why I never miss a chance to get in some practice. <laughs> That's good. That's no good, Bellacoon. You're still a minor. Drinking alcohol is known to stunt the growth of minors in... Um, never mind. Come on. I'm tall enough already. In fact, it'd be easier to find clothes if I shrunk a little. I puffed my chest out proudly. Until I hit my growth spurt, my height was below average in my class. But then I grew and grew, and before I knew it, I'd passed five foot eleven inches. I guess I have all that muscle training and those shady mail order performance enhancing drugs to thank for that. What the fuck? Before then, I never dreamed what I that I'd shoot ten centimeters above George and Nikki, who'd reached his peak height early on. Damn, I'll bet all, I'll bet my relatives all say Look how big you've grown, Badler Chan, or something. It's also embarrassing. I wish they'd just give me a break. Anyway, my name, Battler. Well, it's pretty damn weird, don't you think? I've got to wonder what my parents were thinking when they gave me that name. I've never met anyone who could read it right the first time. I usually got called Sentokun. Unfortunately, that's not even close. My name is written... That's, that, that's, that's nice. Can you read it? No. The first part is my family name. Ushiromiya. God damn it. That's a fairly plausible Japanese pronunciation so far. The problem is my own name. It's made up of the characters for fight and person, and it's pronounced battler. Put it all together, and you've got Ur... Ush... Oh God. Ush... Ushiromiya battler. Pretty crazy, right? It's crazy enough that my parents decided to call me that, but it's even more crazy that some government worker let me let them make it official. Both groups are at the top of my must-kill list. Okay. Anyway, this is one of my cousins. His name is pronounced... I'm just going to skip that. George. He's five years older than me, so he's probably turning 23 this year. Since the, since the cousins consist of two boys and two girls... I ended up playing with George all the time, and because I've always thought of him as a big brother, I still call him Aniki today. Whoa, battle Kun, look how big you've gotten! You know what they say, leave a boy for three days and you'll hardly recognize him. <laughs> it must be in his blood, I... Wait, no, that's not her voice. Hmm. It must be in his blood, I suppose. I don't know why you have a British accent when you're Japanese. Orlov wasn't that at all either until around his high school years. Perhaps people end up taller if their growth spurt comes late. Nah, it's nothing special. A real man needs to be tough on the inside, too. <laughs> exactly! Battle Raccoon here knows how it works. Real men win or lose based on what they've got on the inside. Can't ever forget to keep it up your training and discipline. You do that. Wait very alertly for the perfect moment and strike. Now, I even... I never even imagined that I'd become the company president I am today, master of my own domain. Yep, I think I've come to this far after starting out penniless and ruined. This stout, plump old guy is George Anaki's dad, Heidi Yoshi. He's the husband of dad's older sister. In other words, we're not blood related. Yeah. Uh, he's nice to have child. He's nice to children, sociable all the time, and even quick to give out some spending money to us kids. Simply put, he's an awesome uncle. He speaks in an odd and very not iceable Kansai dialect, but he's actually a natural-born Kanto man. 
Apparently, impressions are everything in the business world. So speaking in a different style than other people is an act that makes him stick out more. However, I hear that he gets embarrassed when talking within earshot of real kanzi person. Of a real kanzi person, so he switches back to standard Japanese. I don't really get it, but he's definitely an interesting person. If only you weren't so quick to brag about your life story. That's enough for now, I think. I'm sure Battler's getting tired of it, aren't you? Nope, not at all. <laughs> Nothing wrong with that. I think it's pretty cool for a man to have some stories he can brag about. I don't have anything like that at all. Oh, really? I'd imagine a man with your looks would leave girls crying left and right. I can't believe that you have nothing at all to brag about. What? You're joking, right? Of course I nothing weird like that's ever happened to me. In fact, I'd rather it did. Ah, so you do have some stories. <laughs> you must tell your aunt all about it later. After all, nothing of the sort ever happens to George. <laughs> this is my aunt and George and Nikki's mother. Eva. Or Eva. She's my dad's older sister. She and Haido Shiyan are a pair of jokes, jokers, and they <laughs> always tease me back as far as I can remember. This sometimes made them a bit hard to get along with when I was small. Well, I guess the events of the last 30 seconds prove that they can still be hard to get along with. Even so, Jordaniki's family is interesting and fun, and they seem to get along just fine. Sheesh, that's pretty much the total opposite of my family. Battle Raccoon! Have you seen Rodolf san Huh? He headed off to the bathroom a while ago. Is he not back yet? Heh, <laughs> maybe the poor geezer dropped dead. There's no way to talk about your own... Or that's no way to talk about your own father. Still, this isn't the first time he's taken so long in the bathroom. Yeah, the guy's always been that way. Does he really have to make take a magazine with him every time he needs to take a dump? Ugh, what on earth might he be doing with those? He... Oh, you don't need to worry about that at all. Since we've been together, I haven't let him do that on his own. He... Oh, I'll have to get the juicy details later. Sounds like Dad's got his balls in an iron grip. You know exactly what would happen with that man if I did keep a tight grip, don't you? No kidding. You're the only one capable of reining in that old bastard. As his son, I am more than happy to let you take over. It's not very nice to call your father a bastard. Yes, leave it all to me. After all, that's my specialty. This woman is my father's wife. Her name is... Yeah, Kiri. As you can probably tell from our conversation, she's not my real mother. She's basically my stepmother. My real mom died six years ago. Kiri-san is the woman dad married afterwards. It's understandable for someone my age. I could never bring myself to call his new wife mom. And I doubt she feels like using the word son on this massive kid who's, who's no relation to her at all. We aren't little kids. We know there's nothing to be gained by fighting. So we decided that we wouldn't force ourselves to pretend that we are family. I've decided to act a bit more frank with her, as though she's a friendly neighbor instead. It's much easier to just keep a little distance instead of forcing ourselves to act all close and making each other uncomfortable. Kiri san has been very open about all this, and th thanks to that, we've been able to get along pretty well. Then, just when we were bad-mouthing Dad about being in the bathroom, the man himself came back, wiping his hands with a handkerchief. Hmm. <laughs> Butler. Hey, what's up, Dad? Oh, God. Eh, ow! Don't pinch my ear. Gah! So we've been talking trash. So have you been talking trash with mom? Yeah. You've been talking trash about me with mom again, haven't you? What makes it so hard to show a little respect for your father, hmm? How? Oh, damn it, that hurts. I hate that. You can stretch my ear all you want, but I'm not going to be able to fly. That hurts. Come on now. Up, 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 down, 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 left, 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 right. Now say, Father, please forgive me for being so rude. <sighs> what the fuck? Like hell I will. Go find yourself some members only store if you want it that much. Gah, let go! This old bastard is my dad. I think I'm pretty tall, but dad's about the same height. It's probably no surprise that Eva Obisan started talking about dad's blood when she saw my height. By the way, my height isn't the only thing I got from him. It seems weird name having weird names runs in the family. Dad's full name is written uh, 
don't even know. You can't read it, can you? No, I can't. Come on, it's just... Anyway, this guy's name is pronounced Rudolph. The Red-Nosed Reindeer. Haha, -ha, he must have... He must hate Grandfather for giving him that name. Still, that's no reason to pass that weird naming tradition on to me. As the old bastard twisted my ear all over the place, Eva snuck up behind him and grabbed his ear. Hey, Rudolph. Is it that child abuse? Gah, that hurts, Aniki. This scene perfectly illustrated the relationship between the prankster, the prankster younger brother and the older sister who could deal out punish, punishment to him despite his size. I think that's good enough for now, Eva. I'll make sure to stretch out his other ear later on. Oh, my apologies. I must leave some pulling for you to do, Kirisan. Rudolph? Make sure Kirisan gives you lots and lots of punishment later on, alright? You're one to talk, Aniki, abusing your little brother like that. Hidoshi Nisan, I'd like to thank you very much for picking her up. If you hadn't been so generous, she'd still be unsold in the store. You have my gratitude and apologies. Hmm? Who are you calling unsold? After taking two to three steps back, Eva unleashed one of her beautiful high reverse roundhouse kicks, which stopped just a centimeter away from the tip of Dad's nose. After starting out with Tai Chi, tai Chi for her figure, Eva then developed an interest in the Chinese martial arts. After that, she went through karate, taekwondo, kopiera, and what is the what is it she's learning now again? Well, anyway, they say a woman's weapons are in her lower body, and that's literally truth for Eva. Rudolph, did you know that a single direct blow to the side of the head like that would knock you unconscious? Not so long ago, I accidentally connected in a practice match, and my opponent was out cold. Sheesh, what a pain. Guess I have to apologize for that strange way she, walk she walks, too. Dad completely unfazed, shrugged, and smiled ironically at Hideyoshi Ujian. Oh, never had a brother or sister myself, so when I see you two bickering with each other, it makes me feel all warm and fuzzy inside. It sure is nice to have a big family and siblings. Oh, then why not consider making a little brother for George Gun? He is already a fine adult who is about to go off on his own, so it might be a good time to have another child. Hey, have a little sympathy for the kid and all the pain and suffering he'd have to live through. I'm surprised even George turned out as well as he did after being born from this sinister sister of mine. And what an awesome kid he is. Please, share some of that with our blockhead of a son someday, will you? That's not how it worked. It's thanks to Eva, rear Eva's proper rearing that George Kuhn became the good, gentle kid he is now. Isn't that right, Nissan? Oh, come now. <laughs> you think so? But George is... <clears throat> George still has a long way to go. Ah, by the way, how's your little Angie-chan doing? I heard she was vomiting. Oh, that's right. And I was hoping to finally see her face after such a long time. <laughs> I don't know why I suddenly went into like, some Scottish accent bullshit here. Is she alright? She often catches a cold when the seasons change. She's very frail. I did not I did want to bring her along, but we decided to have my family look after her this time. I think that's a wise move. Sticking her in that venomous head house wouldn't do her any good at all. A child's health is always very important. Or more important than an adult's convenience, don't you think? I know of some great medicine for vomit and colds like that. When we get back home, I'll send you I'll send you some right away, so please let her use it. Thank you very much, Hideyoshiana. I'm always in your debt. And once the conversation suddenly veered off in that direction, we kids didn't have any chance of buttoning in. For now, I'm just happy that Eva gave Dad his just desserts for tugging on my ear. Are we still waiting for the weather report? George pointed out the counter. The checking, the checking weather sign was still stuck next to the departure times for the flight we were scheduled to board. According to Niki, smaller planes are more subject to winds and other effects of the weather, and it's not at all uncommon for flights to be delayed because of that. Wait a sec, it isn't really going to shake, is it? From down here on the ground, it just looks cloudy, not windy. Well, I guess it's different up, up where the planes fly. The weather is a bit uncertain today. Eva looked at a TV in the lounge. The weather forecast was being broadcast, informing us that a typhoon was approaching the Kanto region. A typhoon again? 
I guess it's unavoidable with the annual family conference being held in October. Couldn't he choose a better season? I agree. I've always hoped we would have it sometime around the Oban Festival in mid-August. In that case, why don't you suggest to Father and Nissan during the conference? Suggest it. Very funny. Why don't you do it yourself? Our brother would never listen to anything I suggested. No way. It doesn't really bother me that much to have it in October. I just suggested that you might want to propose to them, since you said you hate Typhoon so much. I only said that Typhoons always come around this time of year. You're the one who said you wanted to move it to the Oban Festival, right? Well, you said it too last year. Didn't you say it would be easier to fit into your schedule if we had it during the Obon Festival? I have never said anything like that. Oh, yes you did. I certainly wouldn't forget something like that. No, I didn't. You're the only one saying that all the time. Didn't you know? Stopping a kick just a hair's breadth away is a very high-level technique. Sheesh, woman. Women your age shouldn't spend... spend ugh. <laughs> spread your legs. Are you kidding me, dude? You should spread your legs like that. Wow. Dad and Eva's argument looked no different from a couple of brats quarreling. Even though they normally behave like it... Behave, I like usual parents. Oh, like. Oh, the space is just weird. Like usual parents, they turn they turn right back into kids again when they meet their siblings at these family conferences. You're the one who looks like a unreal adult, analyzing all calmly. I hope I never turn out like that old bastard. I'd much rather end up as an intellectual adult like you, Aniki. Like me? Oh, I still have a long way to go. I still have very little experience out there in the real world, and I need to work on becoming more bold and sociable. I think you, you're far surpass me on all of those counts, Battler Coon. I'm sure you'll upstrip me fast enough when you become an adult. George scratched his head and laughed as though trying to hide his embarrassment. Of course, he was just being humble. Aniki entered a university and became an apprentice of Heidi Shan's company at the same time studying both academics and how to become a business emperor in parallel. Then, right after graduating, he got into Hideyoshi san's company as his father's aide, piling up a lot of real-life experience as he devoted himself zealously to his work. His great dream is to one day stand on his own and build up his own kingdom. Aniki is a real paragon of a man, sparing no effort as he strives towards his goal. It's no exaggeration, excuse me, it's no exaggeration to say that I really respect him. And then there's me. I'm nothing at all. I like, I'm nothing at all like Aniki. I'm living my happy-go-lucky, idle high school life to the max. I've got no dreams for the future. I like to just sit back and stay cool and let the money flow in. But of course, that can never happen. When Aniki was my age, he had already formed an impressive objective and had started devoting himself towards studying for that goal. So I guess I can't compare it at all. Or compare at all. My dad just says, Sure, you can study at my company if you like cleaning toilets. Damn it, I'm not going to be in debt of, of that old bastard. I'll find, a way, I'll find my way myself. If only willpower was all it took to become an adult. Should I go on one of those self-searching journeys that are all the rage these days? Well, it's not like I could mooch off my parents for that kind of money. Right then, Hideyoshi-san shouted out loudly. Oji-san is a really nice person to the whole, on the whole, but he does have a problem controlling the volume of his voice. When I looked over, I saw that he was greeting Rosa Obasan, who had come late. Oh! It isn't Rosa-san! Nari-chan, long time no see! <coughs> Sorry. Uh. Long time no see! Ooh. Uh. Maria! Shouldn't that be it's good to see you again? Greet your uncle properly! Uh. It's good to see you again! There you go. Well said. How about some candy as a reward? Oh, huh? Where'd I put it? Rosa-san, it's good to see you again. It's good to see you too, Mar uh, It's good to see you too, Maria-san. It's been too long, Kiri-san. Oh, san Oh, God, all the Japanese. It's making me tongue-tied, and I already have canker sores all over my tongue, and it hurts. <gasps> okay. And, oh my, Battle Coon. Look how big you've gotten. Ah, oh, come on. <laughs> it's embarrassing hearing that from every person I meet. 
Hey, Rosa. You're late. If the plane was on time, you'd barely have made it. I'm sorry. We had some trouble making a train our train connection. So we are waiting on weather again. Oh, don't complain. <laughs> I just changed into a cockney accent. Oh, I can't keep the voices. Oh, don't complain. I much prefer the 30 minute plane trip to spending six hours bouncing on a boat. Even if we're even if we were still keep, even if we were kept waiting here for an hour, it's still much faster overall. Money Chan's gotten huge too. So how tall are you now? Ugh. So how tall am I now? Now? Marty chan parroted Haidichi Usan's question, looking up at her mother. I guess she doesn't remember her own height. She's probably right in the middle of a growth spurt, so her height must change every month. In just a few more years, she'll probably start looking very feminine. Um, how tall were you the last time you got measured? You keep getting bigger and bigger, don't you? Right? Ugh. I think she's grown a lot since last year. Let's see, she turned nine years old this year, didn't she? Nine years old. Ugh. That's right, you're nine years old now. Nine year old nine year olds talk a lot more than that. Glad to see you're doing well too, Mani Chan. Uh, you I uh, guess you've gotten a bit too heavy to play airplane with. George, what a rude thing to say to a lady. Here, I'll do it. Up you go! Ugh. When I went to lift her up in the Nika's place. Murray stiffened defensively, staring suspiciously at my face. Ah, that's right. Last time I met Maria, it was six years ago. She was only three years old. Of course she doesn't remember my face. Maria chan don't you remember? It's Battler Coon. You used to play together, remember? Ugh. Why is she acting like she's two? God. No surprise, I guess. The last time she met Battler, she was only three. You don't keep memories at that age. Well, that's not entirely true, but... Whatever. She must know everyone's face apart from mine because she meets them every year. But I haven't had contact. Oh, but I haven't had contact with Hiroshima or Ushirimaya family for about six years now. So it's no surprise that nine year old girl doesn't have any memories of me. Even I can only just barely remember her bringeth being a three year old crybaby. Maria, this is Battler Onichan, Rudolph Nanji's son, Nansan's son. Understand? brother's son is the brother is the son the big yellow one is the son Ugh. she probably uses that Ugh sound to fill in the blanks when she can't understand the complicated explanation I guess that was a bit too confusing for her Maria Chan this is Battler Coon he's your cousin like me like George on each other Butler cousin wait is George saying this I don't know. Ugh. No, it's her. That's right. You got it. This is part of Aniki. This part of Aniki is what makes me really look up to him. For someone who isn't married, he's just great at dealing with kids. I'm sure that he'll be an indulgent father in the future. Battler Onichan? Maria looked straight at me with a questioning expression, as though asking whether it was alright to call me that. Yep, that's me, Battler. Nice to meet you, Maria. Ugh. Butler. She talks like she's a... God. Maria. You mustn't talk to him like that. Call him Battler Onichan. Please don't. I, I don't want to keep saying Onichan. That's right, Rosa Obasan. I don't swear... I don't... Oh, that's all right, Rosa, -san. Rosa Obasan. I don't sweat the small stuff. <coughs> hey, Maria. We're close enough that we don't need uh, honorifics, right? Battler, Battler, Battler! Ugh. That's right, Maria. Maria, Maria. As he mocks her. Ooh. Uh oh. We horsed around for a while to make up for the six year gap in our friendship. She probably still thinks of me as nothing more than a big new friend, but things will probably work out. But things will probably work out as we get to know each other again. But I'm surprised. She's just the way I remember her, remembered her being six years ago. Seems that people just don't change that much after all. Yeah, she acts like a three-year-old. I'm a bit happy that she's still the pure, innocent girl I remember. Her name is written, I don't care. Of course, it's pronounced Maria. The third character looks like a cross, which is pretty cool. Yeah, it does, kind of. 
Her feelings don't usually show up on her face, so it can be difficult to know just what she's thinking, but that's just how she looks on the outside. On the inside, she's just a sweet, normal girl. Then there's Maria's mother, Rosa Obasan. She's my dad's youngest sister. Rosa is written blah. Here's a name that t that is totally not Japanese. Yeah, it looks more Chinese, maybe? Sorry to say, but her name's almost as ridiculous as Dad's. I've got to respect her for not ending up as screwed up as she is, as he is. Ugh. Well, I think about it. When I think about it, all the names in my family sound foreign. Just why is Grandfather so obsessed with this? Because of him, even us grandchildren have to put up with this weird naming sense. It's even more annoying since Grandfather's own name is perfectly normal. Anyway, there's one thing about Rosa Obasan. That's a relief compared to the other family members. The old bastard and Eva Obisan have this annoying urge to tease and mock people all the time. But even though she shares their blood, Rosa Obisan isn't like that at all. She has the most common sense among all the siblings. Like Hodiachan, she's kinda a kind of aunt who will always be on the kid's side. However, possibly because she's more strict as a parent, she's not liberal with handing out spending money like Hideyoshi Oji-san. Alright, now we have the entire group of family members who are going to board the plane. Then, as though it had waited for us all to gather, an announcement rang out through the lobby. Our apologies for the wait. Boarding will now commence for Flight 201 to Nijima. We ask that the passengers please form two lines in front of the counter behind the white line. Rosa, you still haven't gone through boarding procedures, right? Hurry up! Oh no. Maria, come on! We had to go through a metal detector before going on the runway. Our small plane wasn't as massive as an international flight, but it was still a plane. A staff member holding a metal detector checked us all. Once all of us cleared the check, we followed the staff member out into the runway. Come to think of it, everyone here is in the Hiroshima family. It's like this is a reserved charter flight or something. Our group stopped, excuse me, our group stopped in front of the entrance to the airplane. Then our guide turned around and spoke, looking down at the passenger. Oh, uh, looking down at the passenger. Sorry, <laughs> whenever the L is like separated from the I, it looks like it's an I is, but whatever. The list as he did. Boarding will now commence. As I call out the names of the passenger, or boarding will now. As I call out the names of the passenger list, please take your seats in the order, starting from the front row on the right side and going right to left, then on to the next row. I will now begin reading the passenger list. Oh, I'm first. Right here. By the way, do you have some candy, Eva? I've been looking all over for some, but I can't find any. They're in the handbag. I'll get one I'll get one once we're inside the plane. I've heard that candies are a good way to protect your ears from hurting because of variations in atmospheric pressure when landing or taking off. That's probably what they're talking about. Hope I get a window seat. Haha, <laughs> don't worry. There aren't m any ki other kinds of seats. As George and Nikki said, there were apparently only two lines of seats. So this is what a small plane is like. It isn't really going to shake, right? Ushirima George Sama. Right here. Don't worry, Battler Coon. Won't shake I won't shake too much. Battler. Uh Anika, what do you mean not too much? You can just swim if you fall from a boat, but if a plane crashes you're screwed, right? We all get our own parachutes in our seats, don't we? Wait, we don't? Ushima, uh, Ushima Rudolph Sama. Come on, Battler. Quit being a wuss and get it. Ow, Dad! Don't push me. We don't get parachutes. <laughs> Kiri. Alright, stop fooling around. Let's move along. Ow, Kiri! Don't push me! This block, this blockhead isn't moving! Maria Sama. Ugh! Move, move, move! Rosa-sama. Maria, be quiet. This is your pilot, Ka Kawabata. We'd like to thank you for taking New Tokyo Aviation's Flight 201 today. We estimate that the flight to Nijima Airport will take about 20 minutes. We are receiving reports of atmospheric turbulence. There might be some shaking of the aircraft, so we ask that you do not unfasten your seatbelts after takeoff. Aniki, did that guy just say we needed to wear seatbelts? In a jumbo chat, they let you undo them after takeoff, right? So, it's gonna shake so much we can't take them off? Damn it, you tricked me! It's going to shake after all! 
Where are the parachutes? I know I should have taken the boat! Legend of the Golden Witch. Okay, so I'm actually going to leave it here. It's going to do its thing or whatever. But that's all the time I have for this episode. Um, yeah, you guys can just watch this while I chat your ear off. Uh, so, a little bit slow going again. Just introducing all the characters. It's just kind of what it takes to get into a, a big story like this. Um, but as they fly over to this island, things are going to get really crazy fairly fast. There will be a little more bantering in the next episode, and then you'll really get into the good meat of it. I promise, stick around. It's going to be a fantastic journey, okay? So, um, with that being said, I, I'm pretty sure I'm going to be uploading these on Friday and Saturdays uh, as the visual novel sections. And these are really built for you guys to just sort of sit back, relax, and uh, sip wine. Uh, this particular game is really good if it's rainy outside and it's dark outside and you just want to like sip a glass of wine or something. Do that. It's a fantastic experience. And make sure that the lights are all out when you're watching this too. I'll try my best to not take away from the horror of it all with my comedy, but, you know, I'm just naturally comical, so. Anyway, so thank you so much, everybody, for watching. My name is Zeru, and this is The Babblers.